I've got a bit more to talk about today. Get a snack, be prepared, let's go. So, hello fellow bookworms, it's Katie. Today is a Wednesday, so it's Top 5 Wednesday today. So, um, Top 5 Wednesday was created by Lainey from Ginger Reads Lainey and is now hosted by Sam from Thoughts on Tomes. I'm feeling very Jesus-y right now, apparently. So, I will leave links to their channels in the description below, also to the Goodreads group, if you want to know more about the topics and so, so on and so far. Let's get into the books. Okay, so, children's books is uh, um, the topic, which is a great topic for me, especially, because I love reading children's books. Don't judge me. They're just a lot more fun, mostly. So, um, to put my own spin on this topic, I selected books which all have a strong female protagonist in, the, in as the protagonist. And if you want to know more about strong female protagonists, what I think makes a strong female protagonist, I made an entire video about that topic. I'll link it somewhere on the screen so you can check that out. But after you watch this video, okay? So let's go, let's move on to the first book. So the first book I picked is called Momo. It is written by Michel and you probably recognize his name from, um, he's written The Neverending Story. And, but I personally like Momo a bit better. So the, also the book has been translated into a lot of languages. I will put, put um, all the links in the description below. So you just check that out. You know, if you want to know if it's translated into your native language, no problem. Um, so, the book is about this girl called Momo. She suddenly appears at this little town and um, the people of the town befriend her gradually. Um, she becomes a, mem a valuable member of the community and has a lot of friends and life is pretty good for her. But suddenly these people appear called grey men um, and they start to talk to the people there and suddenly the people change. And Momo doesn't know why and suddenly all of her friends don't really have time for her and Momo is alone. Um, which leads up to her that she, you know, things happen. I don't want to spoil it, but it's pretty good. It's something to do with time and, you know, time stealing and things like that. And Momo has to defeat the Greyman to get her friends back. And I really loved it. It is a beautiful story about the value of time and how you spend time and the value of friendship and courage. So I really loved it and I really would recommend it. It is beautiful. So next book is um, one that you've maybe, maybe seen last week. Um, it is called A Tale of Time City by Diana Wynne Jones. This is so much fun. This is a fun book. This is just so much fun. Um, the main protagonist, Vian Smith, is a refugee that gets transported out of London during the Second World War. And she, when she arrives at this little village where she has to meet her aunt, she um, gets off the train and gets abducted by two boys who turn out to be from Time City, which is a city that can, um, exists out of time. And they kind of pretend for her to be the, their cousins, so she you know, lives in Time City for a time and everybody thinks she's the boy's cousin, but she actually is not. It's a bit complicated. There's a lot of things happening. I can't really, you know, put it all into words, but it's really fun. So Time City is in danger because there are certain things that should have happened that don't happen because somebody is sabotaging those things and boys want to save their home. And they thought Vivian was the right person to help them save their home. But turns out she's not, or maybe she is. Hmm. And yeah, Vivian wants to go home. It's a story about home and saving home and time and fear and courage. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. A lot of things are happening. It's very fast paced. It's just constantly is something going on, which sounds very confusing and very exhausting, but it's Diana Wynne Jones. There's a lot of humor in there and I, I really enjoyed reading it. Definitely, definitely recommend it. So 
the next book, book, ah, it's actually a series, but I count it as one, okay? Don't judge me. Um, it's the Fairyland series by Catherine and Valente, which begins, the first book is called A Girl Who, who Sort of Navigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making. And you guys, the series, I've read it over the past year and just finished a few months ago with the last book. It's beautiful. It's a story of September. She is, in the first book, she's 12 years old and in the last book she's 17 years old, so it transitions into YA on the way. Um, but in the first book she gets, well, she's at the sink and cleaning coffee cups or teacups, I don't remember, it doesn't really matter, but she, um, while she's doing that, a green man appears on her window and asks her if she wants to go on an adventure with him and his flying leopard. And so they go off to Fairyland and September has to confront a lot of odd people or meets a lot of odd, not just people but creatures, and is confronted with the... I'm not gonna say it, but it's really good. <laughs> so she has to she also has to have a lot of courage. She has to be very open-minded about, you know, the creatures that she encounters. Um, I have to say though, in the first book I didn't really like September. She was a bit... Well, she... she I didn't really like her, let's just say that. Um, but I, she really grew on me in the, in the second book. The second book is one of my favorites in the series, so... I do highly recommend the series. It is beautiful. September grows up so much over all of the books in the series. It, she has a beautiful story arc um, and I love all the characters. They are all so quirky and um, especially if you love a little bit of folklore woven into your stories, I do definitely recommend this series. It's really really good. Book number four is um, Neil Gaiman's Coraline. So you probably all saw the movie, it's pretty good, but the book is I might say a little bit better. <laughs> so um, in this book Coraline Jones, she and her parents move into this big house um, where you know there are other residents also and her parents don't really have time for her. Um, they're working on something, on a catalogue, gardening or something and Coraline is pretty much left to her own devices and she discovers a little hidden door and at night when she goes through that door, she comes into this parallel universe, basically, where everything is better. And there's a person who calls herself the other mother, who has buttons for her eyes, and she is like the perfect mother. And Caroline loves this parallel universe, but, you know, things are not what they seem, and Caroline soon has to discover that the other mother has her very own agenda and um, Coraline has to get out of her web, so to speak, if you know the, if you know the movie. Yeah, that was a pun then, that was intentional. Um, <laughs> so um, this is also very much a story about courage, about... Uh, uh, and what I love about Coraline is that she is smart. She plays a game with the other mother and that she's smart and tries to outsmart the other mother and that she has to learn what courage means and what she has to confront her fear. And I really loved it. It is a bit, you know, creepy and dark, you know? So it's maybe not for like eight year olds, but maybe for like 12, 11, 12, 11, 12 year olds. So maybe, maybe the age range, age range would be more suited. Next book is one that I loved as a child. Um, I don't actually have a copy here because my mother took it with her when she moved out of my house. So, anyways, it is The Little Witch by Ottfried Preussler. I, of course, read it in German. It's called Die Kleine Hexe. Um, but it's also translate, been translated into multiple languages. As well, I'll put all the links in the description below. Um, the Little Witch, it's about, well, a little witch. She's not really good at magic. Though, and um, on the 1st of May, about Pogisnacht, she has to go in front of all the witches and, you know, they, te they test her magic. 
she is not good enough. So they tell her that she has one year to become a good witch. And they test her again the year after. Now, what the other witches think what a good witch is and what the little witch thinks make a good makes a good witch, well, it'll turn out to be a little bit different. And the little witch, you know, regularly tries, ha encounters other people and improves her magic and in the end she has to go up against all of the other witches. Um, it's very lovely. She meets children in the forest and they have a magical tea party. She goes to the town and meets the regu regular people and um, just her way of becoming a good witch is just lovely. Um, I, and this is definitely a book that, you know, seven, eight year olds, even six, seven, eight year olds can enjoy or you can read it to them and enjoy it together because it's lovely. <laughs> I remember I had a cassette tape, um, I had multiple cassette tapes of like the actual book and then I had one cassette tape which was English, learning English with the little witch and I, this, were, that, this cassette were my first English words that I've learned. I think the first English word that I've learned was broomstick and witch. That was it for today. It's a bit long. Sorry. That's okay, I hope, with you, because there are a lot of books that I'm very passionate about, so a lot to talk about. So I hope you found some interesting books and I um, hope you had a lot of fun watching this video and um, I hope you have a lovely day and reading something magical and I will see you soon. Bye.